W. Bush. Both are CNN political commentators. I, I do want to note that when Sarah Sanders claims that the president's an equal opportunity person in regards to who he insults and demeans, it hasn't been true, according to the Washington Post, since the inauguration. They went back and counted uh, the number of people he has insulted on Twitter in terms of their intelligence, going after their intelligence. 73% were black, 27% right. So the equal opportunity aspect there, Anna, at least doesn't bear out over time. Look, uh, even taking Sarah Sanders at her word, which is uh, a huge stretch and something that does not come easily to most Americans who believe in truth, uh, even if this wasn't a racist statement, it is a disgusting statement. It is an inappropriate statement. It is an unprecedented statement. The problem is that Donald Trump gets away with behaving in an unprecedented, unseemly manner over and over and over again when it comes to the Republican base. It doesn't change anything that he is calling a woman a dog. Anybody else, any other Republican, Democrat, American who would use this kind of language while being president of the United States would be roundly criticized by all Americans. But when it comes to Donald Trump, nothing sticks with the Republican base. There seems to just be no bottom to this barrel. Scott? Yeah, uh, I, I agree with Sarah that I don't think he insults people on the base of race. I mean, we've watched him go through the Republican primary and now operate in his presidency, and he basically insults anyone uh, who moves if that person that's moving is moving against him. Uh, and he and Sarah's right. I mean, they've come in all shapes and sizes and colors and genders. And so he insults everybody, and, and, and I, I agree with her on that point. I don't like it that the president... Uh, his spending time responding to a staffer. I mean, what you have here is a president using demeaning language. I mean, to call someone a dog is, is demeaning, at least in his eyes. And he's also, you know, punching way down here uh, as it relates to using the presidential uh, uh, podium, uh, or, which in this case is Twitter, uh, to take up our nation's attention on a staffer. I don't get it. I, I, I wish he would just leave it alone uh, and not give her the attention that she craves. I mean, she's clearly gotten under his skin, and she knows she can get a response from him, and she's going to keep doing it, and he ought to, he ought to leave it alone uh, and not use this kind of language hey, Scott, uh, when, he's, uh, when he's a responder. When you do say that the president insults everyone, though, how then do you explain those Washington Post numbers? I mean, they went back and counted. Insulting people is one thing, but attacking their intelligence historically does have racial overtones, and since the inauguration, he's done it way more to African Americans. Yeah, I... Look, I, I, uh, I haven't done my own statistical analysis of this. Uh, I mean, my advice to the president would be attacking people's intelligence, whether they're white or black or anything else, uh, is not, that, that's not befitting of the office. Just because someone opposes you or someone has betrayed you, which is the case with Omarosa, it doesn't make them uh, stupid or low intelligence. And because of the cultural and historical connotations of doing that, you ought to stop because it gives your opponents ammunition to continue to attack you. Uh, and so I think the president could deal with these situations by sending out surrogates to call her credibility into question or to call other political opponents' credibility into question without ins uh, inserting himself into it in a way that, that almost makes it worse. And so I, uh, I think for a number of reasons here, there's a, there's a better way to handle this, uh, and I wish the president would actually spend more time telling the good story that he has to tell about the optimism in the country mm -hmm. and the good economy but we spend all our time on this instead of that and part of the John, problem what part of the problem hang John on they, just, John, just, okay if, go ahead Ann. if if you if you need to read a tweet from donald trump uh calling omarosa a dog in order to believe that he is a racist i frankly don't know where you have been for the last three years i don't know where you have been for the last forty years look this guy's racist history and racist past began began with housing discrimination in new york back in the sixties let's not forget the central park five let's not forget the attacks on federica wilson on maxine waters on john lewis who for god's sakes is a quasi deity when it comes to civil rights let's not forget the birther conspiracy which is what gave him his birth in politics, questioning Barack Obama's authenticity and legitimacy as a president. Let's not forget the asshole countries. Let's not forget the second treatment of Puerto Ricans. Let's not forget the attacks on Don Lemon and LeBron James for having, uh, for calling them dumb. So, you know, if, if you need this in order to believe the guy is a racist, I mean, come on, wake up and smell the racism. Really, it's not that hard. And Scott, I just want to make one point. You were talking about selling the good story. One of the problems is Sarah Sanders was trying to talk about black unemployment. 
and she gave bad information. She made a claim that just wasn't true uh, from the podium yesterday in the White House press room, suggesting that the president of the United States, Donald Trump, has already created more jobs for African Americans than President Obama. He had to correct that afterwards. So if you're going to use the economic argument, Sarah Sanders better get her facts straight. Who's credible right now in any of this, Scott? That's one of the problems here, is that the president, Sarah Sanders, some of the president's allies trying to push back here, Katrina Pearson, but she was just caught lying about a tape. You know, she said she never had a conversation, and we heard a tape of her having that conversation. So who has credibility in this entire discussion? Yeah, that, that's a great question, and I guess it depends on who you believe in the most. I mean, if you're somebody who hates the president and you want to see him uh, come down and you want to see him lose and you want to see him fail, then you're going to find the people who are disparaging him to be more credible. And if you want to see the president succeed, you want to believe everything uh, that he says. I mean, I, 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 that, that we, we've separated into our tribes here, just like in every other situation in this presidency. Uh, there's a credibility uh, gap on, on, on a lot of fronts, and so you just sort of retreat into your corner and choose to believe uh, the person that you want to believe in uh, and disbelieve anybody who's calling that belief system into question, and, and it's happening on this front as well. I just think when the president responds to her, uh, he is giving her credibility because it makes it appear as though he's worried about it. And then she's smartly, in some cases, gone out and sort of baited people into saying things that appear not to be true then based on uh, audio tape evidence. So uh, I, think, I think one way to, to, to keep people from believing that she is credible in this case would be to, to stop responding to her. And uh, how Listen, the person who gave, yeah, but the person who gave Omarosa credibility to begin with is Donald Trump, or lack of credibility, right? Because I think some of us uh, never found her credible, don't find Donald Trump credible, certainly don't find Sarah Sanders credible, don't find any of that lot credible. But let's remember, Omarosa is, you know, Donald Trump's test tube baby. He owns this baby. He's hired her not once, not twice, not thrice. He's hired her four times between reality TV and the White House. This is his problem. He owns this. So you can't claim that Donald Trump did not know what kind of person Omarosa was. You can't claim that it's a different tribe. No, they are birds of a feather and they flock together. What's interesting to see here is that you are seeing some of the same Trump mechanisms and the same Trump tricks used against him by somebody that is his protege and his mentee who has been around him and who probably with the exception of um, Jared and Ivanka, Jarvanka or whatever they're called, uh, Omarosa is the person in the White House that he hired who he knew the best. A lot of the other folks he was meeting for the first time, folks like Ryan Spreebus or Sean Spicer or the Sarah Sa Sanders or even John Kelly. Omarosa, he has known for years, decades. So he cannot claim that this is not a problem of his making. She he has no credibility. Sarah Sanders has no credibility. Omarosa has no credibility. She has been part. She has been complicit with this administration, with the lies, with the racism for far too long to now come and play victim. Truly, for me, one of the most disconcerting things about this entire situation is that I, I, I'm, I've come almost close, scarily close, to feeling some sort of solidarity with Omarosa. And then I remember her actions and what she said and what she has done and where she has been for the last three years. And I say, girl, get over it. Take two aspirins and lay down. Anna Navarro, Scott Jennings, thanks very much for being with us. I do appreciate it. Erica. Grand jury report detailing extensive efforts to cover up decades of abuse by hundreds of predatory priests. More than a thousand children involved here. So what is the Catholic Church going to do?